Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Tuesday, February 6, 2024. I hope that you are all doing okay this morning. I hope that you are in good health. I hope you are in a good state of mind. And I pray that you had a good night rest. And as you go through this day, may you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. May He pour out His blessing upon you. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 25. We'll read from verse 31 to 46. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. 32 and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 35. For I was hungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. 36. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? 38. When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? 39. Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, In so much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. 41. Then shall ye say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. 42. For I was an hungered, and he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. 43. I was a stranger, and he took me not in, naked, and he clothed me not, sick and in prison, and he visited me not. 44. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, In so much as he did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. 46. And last says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning again for His holy word. A stern reproof this morning we are given by the Lord that He is going to reward us according to how we live our lives on earth. According to the things that we did or didn't do, we will be rewarded accordingly. And so He gave this scenario where when He comes, He separate the sheep and the goat and the sheep is represented by the righteous the goats are represented by the unrighteous he said that he was pleased with the righteous because of the things that they did he said that they fed the hungry they closed them they visit those who are in prison they provided or assist those who are in need they give unto others so they were selfless in their service towards others. And the Lord rewarded them for that. Now, he also stated that the goats or the unrighteous are lost because of luck thereof. Meaning that they did not do any of these things. They live a selfish life for themselves. They did not help anybody. They did not do any good. And so because of the life and because of the fruitless life that they live, they were rewarded according to that. Now, they both asked the question, Lord, when did we do that? 
I don't remember giving you any water. I don't remember giving you anything to eat. I don't even remember visiting you in prison. So what are you talking about? And what did the Lord responded by saying? Whatever you did unto others, you did it unto me. So something for us to think about. The way how we treat others, that's exactly how we treat God. And what we are saying to him is that if you were here physically with us, this is how we would treat you just the same. And so we need to be careful of how we treat others. The Bible say, you don't know when you will be entertaining angels. So we must be careful. Brethren, I know sometimes we struggle with these things, but we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to put them aside because they will cause us our soul salvation if we are not careful. And I don't want any of us to be lost, including myself. Amen. And just to make a note here, it's not that the righteous are saved because of the good deed that they did, because we are not saved by works. So we cannot do anything in order to be saved, meaning that we cannot help somebody and think that it will warrant us being saved or it will make us eligible to be saved. No. It's because of his righteousness and because of his saving grace why we do those things. And because we love him and in extension we love others, we do those things. So when we, when we become a Christian or when we surrender to the Lord, our character starts to change from a selfish one an unselfish one right? the bible says that we are saved through what through faith and his grace it is not anything that we have done that will make us save so just want to make that clear now i know it might seem a bit confusing because you might be saying then if we are not saved by works or if the things that we do does not mean that we will be saved why is it then it is so important for us to do that well i will answer you this the lord call us to do just that in isaiah he says is this not the fast that i have called you to to what to ease the burdens of those around you we must understand even though we are not saved by these things in order for us to reflect the character of Christ, we must care for others. We must love others. We must lift the burdens of those who are burdened. Because the Lord has done the very same for us. The sacrifice that he made on Calvary, he did it because he loved us. He did it because of his mercy and his grace. And so... For those of us who believe that getting baptized and going to church, that is enough. We are sadly mistaken and I'm here to encourage you not to think like that. You might be thinking, but I don't know what I can do. Again, I will say, don't think like that. Don't allow the devil to put those thoughts in your head. There is something that all of us can do. No one is saying that you should take all your resources that you have and to go and just give give away everything but the lord bless us so that we can be a blessing to others and the truth is that you might not have something tangible to give but you can still give you can give off your time you can give off your love you can give off so much more than tangible to give and so we need to start to think outside the box we need to show others that we care because the truth is that if we fail to represent god to the people then when the lord come he will destroy us because it means therefore that we have not done the work which he has called us to do he said that we are we are called as co-laborers to work with him not against him and so as we think about the reading this morning May we look in our own life and see what it is that we can do for him. If you are not able to do something, 
meaning if you if somebody needs money and you're not able to give that or food and you're not able to give that see if you can source it from someone who can so it doesn't have to always come from your pocket or your um pantry because the truth is that you might not have it to give at the time but you can at least try to see if there is someone you can reach out to to help you help that person that is still consider helping and it's still a noble act so whatever it is that you can find to do for god and to do for others in his name we need to do it and so i pray that the lord will really guide us i pray that the holy spirit will impress us and show us how we can be a blessing to others and how we can glorify his name in the things that we do for him may god bless you and may God continue to keep you faithful as you wait for his return. Amen.